and a very very important topic because we are welcoming and enjoying to be in a, the, the time to enjoy the year 2015. There was a time as a missionary to another country that hope kicks in to my life. Now in the midst of impossible situation it happened to me. Now the power in the life experience the hope in God will not disappoint you and me and put you to environment. God would allow that to happen. 1981, missionary to Japan, four months visa to stay there. Packet money in Japan, very expensive place even in the year 1981, $100 packet money with just a return ticket, which is a must, a requirement for all the visitors overseas even today. It, there must be a return ticket. Now, the third thing that happened to me is no definite contact. I had only one referral and gave it to me and I went there in a very long distance travel and that place of Santa City, a pastor uh, of a church, not to mention the name of the church. And he gave me and gave us just one night to stay and the following day it, it is up to us where to go. And the fourth thing is no alternatives to transmit the message to them, no alternatives. Or they cannot understand us. In mainland Japan, Japanese language only. And so they don't speak English and they will, cannot understand your word. And lastly, in the context where I was uh, allowed by God to experience how to hold on and to trust God, freezing time of the year, December 19, 1981, which is winter time in Japan. Now listen to this. The one thing and only one thing that we hold on to was the hope in God who will not leave us alone. And so this is the result. The climax of that hope as we were in Japan was money came, they were given to us in a miraculous way. And just to give you a hint, they asked uh, a ticket from Netherlands, sir, can you send us two plane tickets from Okinawa to New York City? And they sent us the ticket, and not even a penny, I sent them, they just trust the words of my letter, they don't know me personally, they give us the ticket, sir, when you, the ticket arrives in your hand, please pay us back in the Netherlands. Thank you so much. And then, the, what happened is, in the interview, now in the Anchorage, Alaska, the port of entry going to New York, with the officer said, Reverend Echo, where do you stay, sir? I'll be staying at the uh, home of Reverend Dwight at Brooklyn, New York. Sir, I notice you don't have uh, you don't have return ticket. You must have two tickets to return to Okinawa. I was not even an Okinawa. I took my attest case and, and said, Sir, I have cash money in my attest case. And he said to me, No problem, I don't need to see you are approved, enter to the port of entry, going to New York. And the result of that, I passed to New York, to the elite people in New York, and the mission is started in America. That's the story when you hope in God. The first thing I would address to all of you this morning is a question to keep to yourself the answer. What is hope? What is hope? What is hope? Now, nations and people of the world interpret hope according to the secular definition and understanding about who. Now Australia today, wow, we thank you for the solution of Australia. Australia today is the economic, there is what we call the, the nation of this land, based on the report and the comments of authority from other countries as far as economy is concerned. Australia today, this nation, there it would be there is an economic sustainability according to the authority of the world economy. The head of the world's leading economic agency, Mr. Angel Gloria, calling the government recent budget a sustainable, durable solution to deficit. You know, we are in deficit, you know that. Australia's leadership was aiming by 2020, five years beginning next week, 2015, 2020, five years, this vision is going to be once again in surplus, not deficit, but surplus once again. We have two decades of uninterrupted annual growth, almost 22 years, uninterrupted 
consistent annual growth of income in the nation of Australia. But the Euro, Euro dollars is emerging from recession. You know what happened in Europe, the recession? They are now picking up, but the economy is still fragile. So we can see that people in Australia, they are now living, depending that one day it will be long, it will be sustainable, durable, and there's going to be a surplus where our children's children will be blessed even when we're gone. America, their hope in 1800, their hope was God in the 1800. Then later on, their hope was to shift to power and economy. We can see America for many, many years, she invested so many, so many nations of the world, and one day, uh, many, many years ago, I was researching that America's wealth is comparable to 65% of the whole wide world wealth. One of my uh, reading and research many years ago. And so we can say that America was depending on God in the 1800. But later on, there is what they call the America is receiving to another thing. Uh, the power in the economy. Then later on, America, because something is happening, happening in America, there was an economic collapse and you know something happened, big time happened from the very top to the almost to the bottom, almost there, just hanging on there. Today there is some kind of what we call reshifting of the hook. Generally speaking, in America, what is happening today is what you feel is good for yourself, just do it. The cycle now is instead of depending on God. They cannot depend on the economy. The young people, the new generation, young and old now, is leaning toward self. It's me, my strength, and everything, and it's become selfish with all love and respect in nature today. And so, today, America, the people depends on the ego-centered life or to self. The things that I believe good to me and make me happy, they know that that is basically an acceptable, acceptable norm today. What makes me good to feel and make me happy is the most important thing. I care less other things. So let's go back to the question. Understood. What is hope? Now in the secular meaning, the word hope, according to the secular meaning, is something we are wishing to happen or to be fulfilled in the future. That's hope, according to secular meaning. And another meaning is hope is a desire or expectation that might happen, that might happen, there is no concrete stability or solid foundation as far as what is going to happen to the things that you desire and pray and believe for. There is what we call shakeable ground. I give you an example. For many years, I know some of the words is not to anybody, uh, maybe the wife or the husband. He is like that. I hope my wife, I hope my husband will change. Have you heard that? For many years, it's like that he never changed. So they are hoping. I hope my dad will play with the soccer ball one Saturday. Now it is a longing desire from the son that his dad at least one day in a year, because it's a busy working seven days a week, whatever alternative of things that he was busy about, the little boy was hoping, hoping, desiring that one day his dad would be playing with him a soccer ball in the field. I wish and I hope maybe a family that we can give time or husband and wife together. They are hoping. I wish I could have a date with my husband and my wife. Watch movies. Walk on the park together, holding hands together just like 20, 30, 40 years ago, holding hands together as husband and wife. For we work for 20 years instead of working today. I hope that one day we have a day eating in, in the best restaurant, McDonald's. <laughs> hope is an expression of uncertainty. That's the secular term hope. That sure it, it will happen. I hope my dreams for a long time for my family to succeed before my kids get out under our jurisdiction or our authority until such time when they get out we are already succeed as far as dreams, goals, ambitions are concerned. I hope that I will win 30 million loto this week. One will win or sometimes nobody will win because millions and millions of Australians play loto every week and nothing and out of this million population only one will win. I hope, I hope and how many people are losing so much money 
and they're not willing to stop. Half of them were because it's just hoping. And it's up to them as a prerogative. There's no way for me to say that's wrong, that's bad. It's for them. Now, what is hope now, as we go to the biblical principle, what is hope according to the Bible? Listen to me. Hope is a fundamental component of the life of the righteous. Proverbs 23, 13 says, Surely there is future, listen to me, Surely there is future, and your hope will not be cut off. Proverbs 23, 13, there is not the biblical principle of hope according to God. Surely, which is meant not maybe, probably, no, the Bible says, Surely there is is pure, insecure, surely there is the future of your hope. There is surely there is future in your hope will not be cut off. Another meaning of the hope in the biblical or in the Bible is that hope is founded in a firm and solid foundation in the Word of God. So how does, does it happen? When you know one promise of the Word of God, listen to me, please get it. One promise of the Word of God and it is applied to you, hold to that promise of God, it is like making a deep, big hole. Now, even the typhoon will come like a tango unless the houses are already prepared for big typhoons or tempests, and then jump inside that big hole, six feet to ten feet, as far as deep is concerned, and you will not be shaken. In other words, in that analogy, if you know one promise of the Word of God, first, solid foundation, Hold to that until one day you will see the fulfillment of your dream shall come to pass. That's the hope based on the biblical explanation. So, founded, so the foundation of the promise of God. But I, I will make some kind of interference in this hope, secular hope. There are what they call a complication and a dilemma of hope according to human wishes, just a two point thing, and I will go to the main point as I come to today. An expectation of what they call worthy hope. Listen to this. In the happy, happy family or happy dreams of relationship between kids and father, mother, and daughter, husband and wife, is affected by this. Okay, hope class with culture. Okay, listen to me to the point. We have what we call the matriarchal and patriarchal society or culture. Who is the head of the home? The mother or the father? Who will give the money? Who will manage the home? Who will work to and protect the family and feed them on a consistent basis? These two things play a big part whether hope will be attained or hope because of the opposite belief and the meaning of leadership at home. This is what they call some interference as far as happy family and of course the hope as a believer is concerned. Now, you can see some observation. The father work and the mother keep the house and keep the budget and keep the money and take care of the children. In another point, someone, some, the husband work, the wife work, both keep the money and they share for the expenses of the home. I want you to see these things are happening. Others, the husband work, do the budgeting, control the money, both are working in a secular job, and the wife does the cooking, including the husband watching TV. America is a patriarchal society. It is run by men. Many voters, if you try to trace out America, as far as voters are concerned, there are many women who go to the polling pools and then vote for the person who is to be running in the government. And not many, many men are voting in that land called America. But I want you to hear that most of the offices and government, political uh, government uh, leadership are mostly men. So, patriarchy literally means the rule of the father from the Greek word and the autocratic rule of the male head of the family. Matriarchy or matriarchal uh, kind of leadership means the auto autocratic rule of failure of the head of the family. Now, this kind of society started many thousand years ago, 
and then later on it was adapted from in, in Asia, in Africa, even North America, in South America, and some are diminishing, many of them are diminishing now, because there are some kind of clashes between father and mother, who is the head, who is the ruler, who will be the one, who will be the decision, and I'll tell you, in this hope that it will be a wonderful family for 2015, there is the solution from the Word of God. What happened is, in the leadership, because of this, many in the leadership especially, when it comes to not only leading the kids, or which school that they will go to, and especially money. I've been counseling people with all respect to these people in America. One of the major causes of divorce or separation in this land of 20 men many years ago from the 80s I counseled people, the main reason was about money. And so we can see in that context that Money, 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 and then, and because of that, even today, before you get married, today is common. There is what we call a prenuptial agreement. If I have, I, I, I own a house and a, and a boat and a big piece of property, I am 30, 40 years old, I'm going to marry you, and then there must be a prenuptial, prenuptial agreement. You don't own any part of that. The things that are built on together, you are part of that conjugal property. Can you see how money destroys relationship? So that's what they call deviation from a true line where God is living with us. Now, we're going to reshape this. Okay. The most important thing about Christian patriarchy is emphasis the natural order ordained by God to the point. Men and women in the Christian home, they have their different roles to play or to function. The man is the protector and he is the provider and the women or the mother, the wife, is the nurturer and the homemaker. That is the way that God has put us according to his design. Okay, women are under male authority, listen to that, it's from word. Daughters are to obey their parents, and wives are to obey their husbands. Now, when everyone fulfills the role God has created for them, listen to this from the clarity of the Word of God, when they fulfill what God has created for them in this what we call hierarchical kind of authority from God to the Father, and then to the mother, to the children, when we obey that pattern from the Lord, there's going to be what? A blessing to the family. There is a continuous blessing to the family. Here. On the other hand, the man who stays with the family, I want you to see the balance, the point, and then we get to the main, uh, the main part, and then I close there. When you are, when God said, Father, you are the head. But there's a word, husband, love your wife as God loved the church. I give you the detail of that. What God is revealing here as Christ has no personal ambition or selfish motive, he was willing to give up everything that is pretending to him to enjoy just for one thing and one thing and one thing alone that the church, the living organism, will be able to enjoy the fullness of God's plan for the ages. And that's the reason why God is with all of everything, His, his glory, His splendor. And I, He identified Himself more than a slave, and died, and then put on the tomb, which was a borrowed tomb, it was not even His own tomb. So we who are poor, very poor mentally, emotionally, physically, relationally, financially, spiritually, will all become rich. Let's apply it. Since Christ is the father, husband, love your wife as you love the church. In other words, if I plan to, do, to, to buy something special for me, I have to think, what should I buy for my wife before I buy for myself? 
What makes my children happy before me, me, me? You know today, in the Facebook, there's some picture, I, I read some word, I got, I gotta be selfie today, selfie. You know? That selfishness has to be buried. In other words, I go deep, deeper to this. In other words, there come a moment in time that the husband, for the sake of the family, that's why hus uh, wives are to your husband, and husband, since you are the leader, you are an example, here is what Jesus did, if there is an intruder from the outside, and they're going to come into your place and get everything and kill the family, the husband, the male, the head of the family, he cannot afford to, these things to happen, he will be in 